Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Flight of Icarus by Cobblestone Games. This is a two to four player game. It takes roughly about 45 minutes to play, and it's for ages 12 and up. And in the game Flight of Icarus, you are playing as Daedalus and Icarus. You are attempting to fly through um, one side of the land to the other. Now, of course, if you fly too high, your wings will get melted and you will fall. And if you go too low, the wings will get moisture and you will fall into the sea. And basically, you're trying to make sure that your sun can get across, all while watching out for the weather. The beginning stages of the game all involve prepping and gathering your required... Uh, items for the wing and the wax that you need. Coins will allow you to utilize certain cards to give you a bonus as you move through your next phase, which is the flight phase, getting from one side to the other. If you can get to one side to the other, then, and you're the only person, you'll win. If there are more than one people, person that makes it to the other end, then there is a tie, in which case you'll check the ties, and it'll go from like whoever has the most stamina, to whoever has the most wings, to whoever has the most coins, and then whoever gets that score is going to be the winner of the game for Flight of Icarus. We'll go ahead and talk about the setup, how to play, and of course, my review. To set up the game Flight of Icarus, go ahead and give each player that is playing a player board, along with a wax seal, five stamina that will go on the left-hand middle side of their player board above the arrows, and four innovation cards and one weather card. Then place the main game board down in the middle of the playing area. Every player is going to get a character that you can place on the far right-hand side. Go ahead and place the wings, the wax, the moisture, and the stamina in different areas around the game board within reach of all players, as well as the coins. Take the two decks of cards, the innovations and the weather deck, and make sure that they're placed within reach on the game board as well. The final thing you'll do is you will take this little hourglass token and place it on the hourglass marker to begin. Now, just before we begin explaining how the game is played, there's one last thing you'll do in setup. Each player is going to choose two cards from their hand, place them face down, and pass two cards going clockwise. After that happens, the, so if I pass this and somebody else passed me too, uh, then each player is going to discard uh, or pass one of those cards and... Um, and keep one of them and pass the other one, in which case you're going to end up with back four cards. So it's a little bit of a draft experience, changing the weather cards that you originally started out with. After the draft is done, the last thing that's going to happen is somebody is going to be getting this key. This is the first player marker key. Once a player gets this, then they're ready to begin the game Flight of Icarus, which I'll explain now. Playing Flight of Icarus is quite simple. There are two phases in the game, the prep phase and the flight phase. And there are different portions. They set up in different sections of the game. So basically how it works is the prep phase will begin. You'll take your marker here and you'll move it on the number one. And it's gonna go all the way down to number four. When it hits number one, the player who is first is going to take their wax seal and place it on any of the locations on the game board. Now remember though, this game board is actually double-sided, so when you're playing with more than two players, well, we're gonna flip this guy over, and there is going to be uh, more spaces that you'll be able to utilize your wax symbols. So in this case here now, I've got six, seven, eight spaces. So the first player will take this marker and place it down on one of the spaces there. And then after they've done that, they're going to pay the required stamina. The very top of each of these spaces is going to have a stamina cost, which are your little hearts. You will spend them, and then you will gain whatever is on the bottom. You could be gaining two feathers, two wax seals. You could be getting a feather and a wax. You could be gaining uh, two innovation cards, or playing two innovation cards, I should say. Uh, and you have to pay the cost of them. And a coin, you could get five coins, and so on and so forth. They're pretty detailed, pretty explan explanatory as to how they function. But anyway, I place my three, and whenever you spend stamina, you'll move them from the top portion of your stamina area to the bottom portion, and then you'll gain the rewards. In this case, it would be two pieces of wax that I would use for my wings. And then the next player would get a chance to go, and they can place on any of the locations that is not a location that's already taken up by a wax seal. So in this case, they could spend two stamina, and they could gain five coins. And the next player is gonna get a chance to go as well, placing down, spending their stamina, and gaining what is required, like a wing and a wax. And you'll place them in their required areas. Um, another cool thing, I'll explain how you can do this, but let's say that you had some gold coins because you gained them previously. Uh, you can go ahead and place your wax seal on something like, oh, this one here. This will let you gain two coins. And it'll say there's a little like cog wheel. You'll be able to play an innovation card. Now, when you look at your innovation cards, on the bottom left is a cost. On the cost of the card is going to have a number of coins. So if I wanted rigid wings, I would spend three coins from my supply to the main supply. And I would put this card in one of the three categories. 
if it doesn't have a category symbol on it, you'd put it off to the side. There are three main categories. You have the flight, you have the feather, and you have the wax symbols. And this is a flight one, so I would place it down right here. These are either going to be one-time abilities you can use throughout the flight, or it's going to provide you with some type of benefit when you do something. So in this case here, flying down is going to give me an extra stamina. And that will last through the whole flight phase, because all this whole time you're just trying to prepare for the flight. Once everybody's had a turn to go, uh, then you're going to continue going until no one can use stamina. So in this case here, I've got two more. So uh, the, I would go ahead and say, okay, I'm, I'm this player here. I'd move over here. I'd spend the stamina. I gain the bonus. And they would do the same. They would move their marker around. They would spend the stamina. They'd get whatever bonuses. And then once everybody is basically run out of stamina, what's going to happen is the next round will trigger. You'll move the uh, little marker here that's on one, and you will go to two. Additionally, you will get all of your stamina back. If you had an extra stamina that you didn't use, so for instance, you paid a cost of two and two, and you had one left, which means you can't buy anything, you'll actually get a coin. You'll put it in your supply. And then you'll simply rinse and repeat. You'll move, you'll start moving your wax seal around the game board, and uh, you're going to be spending your stamina to gain the rewards, which you'll hopefully have wings, wax, maybe some coins, extra stamina, and even hopefully some innovation cards. And you'll do that for four rounds. Once the fourth round is over, you'll move to the flight phase, which is the top here, and that's when the flight begins. But before I talk about the flight, I want to mention one other thing, which will also be important in the flight phase. At the end of every round, once you've spent all your stamina, or as much as you can, and uh, people want to move on to the next round, you're always going to pass, pass the first player marker to the next player, and then begin the next round. And because that's also part of the flight phase too. So in this case here, if I went for the first, second, third, fourth round, it passed back to me for the flight, in which case now the flight begins. And the flight is actually a bidding phase. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have weather cards in your hand or a weather card, and you are going to be able to bid. Everybody's gonna put their hand in and then they're going to reveal. And whoever spent the most is going to get an extra weather card and they're gonna be the person who starts. And they'll be taking this token here. And um, <clears throat> how that works is pl that player is going to move onto one of the spaces on the game board going this way. Additionally, the first two players to back out will actually get a coin so that they can keep in. And additionally, if you win the bid, but you have no more coins left, instead of drawing a weather card, you will actually take another coin so you can participate in the next bid phase if you'd like. And basically that after the bid is over and you've drawn your weather card and you've gone ahead and moved, uh, based on where you move, there's certain requirements. So in this case here, we go ahead and take our, our little coins back to refer reference who we are. I'll just put them right here. Um, I am the white player and I can move and I can start in any of the spaces here and I'll go ahead and move um, here. But before I do that, before I actually take a movement, I actually have to play a weather card. So I could play something like this one here, a Tempest. And the Tempest says, if anybody is an A, B, C, or D, they're going to lose a feather. And it also says, at the end of the, this, this round, after everybody has moved, anybody in these areas is going to receive a boon or a negative effect. So now I know that in A, I would lose a wax. In B and C, I would lose a heart. And if I was in D, I would gain a moisture, which are all bad. But I guess I'll go ahead and move here. And each player as well will do the same thing. Now there's certain rules as far as movement goes. Um, but we'll just go ahead and track that after a second. We'll go ahead and move the characters. If you move into a space when you're going up, you're going to spend a stamina to do so. So flying up typically will cost a stamina. Um, flying down is fine, but if you fly too far down, you're going to suffer moisture on the bottom level, and you will lose a wax on the top level most of the time. It's, or basically every time you're always going to lose, gain a moisture or lose a wax on the top or bottom. And why is that important? Well, in order to stay afloat, you're going to probably have to have more than three feathers. If you don't, every round you're going to lose a stamina. And if you ever run out of stamina, you're out. You're also going to need to, whenever you move up, spend that stamina. And B, whenever you have more feathers than wax, you will lose a feather. Uh, note too, that if you ever walk onto a space of, that's on that's somebody else's, uh, you're actually going to lose a stamina if it's your only option. If it is not your only option and you choose to move to a space with another player, then you will lose two. So if you could choose to go somewhere else, you could actually lose two. Um, and the way you lose is pretty simple. A all of your stamina is depleted. B, if you have no more feathers. 
and see if water tokens, your little moisture tokens, is equal to the number, number of feathers that you have on your board. So you wanna try and avoid to get too wet to where your wings can't fly, to the point where if you don't have enough wax to keep your wings attached to you, or if you're just too tired to keep flying. And that's basically the idea of the game, and it's a bidding rotation. And the person who wins the bid will be past the player marker, that player is going to then play a weather card, and that will track the effects. And like I said, it's always going to be an instant effect, and then a secondary effect that happens at the end of turn. And then also, these cards can have little um, types on them. And that is actually going to be relevant for these cards here. These are your innovations. So maybe, for instance, I played this Blowing Wind card. Well, this one says whenever a Blowing Wind card is played, I can cancel a minus one feather. And or maybe whenever I move down on the track, instead of nothing happening, uh, I can actually gain a stamina. Or I can ignore, ignore, ignore moisture on cloud cards whenever I'm on the lower levels. And so there's always this, these things that you can keep track of. Now also be aware that when you keep moving onto the same spaces as other people, you're going to have to suffer stamina loss. You always have the choice of either moving straight, down one, or up one. You can never move up up two though. So every round it'll just continue to go like this. This person would cost a stamina and move up this way. This would be free for that person. And this person going onto the same space as another person is gonna cost them a stamina if it's the only space, but if there's multiple spaces, in this case there is, they would cost them an extra stamina for two. And if this person went down here, they would lose a moisture or move up here and check the effect. And it's just gonna keep playing out like that. Each round there's going to be a bid and players are gonna move across. If any of the events happen where you lose all your stamina, you lose all your wings, or you have more moisture than wings or equal to, then you're out and you'll just fall into the water. And eventually, everybody's gonna try and get across and hopefully one will. And if one does, then that's a success. Otherwise, whoever made it the farthest is a success, or if multiple people made it to the end, then you're going to check certain things. You'll first check whoever has the most stamina, which is the tiebreaker, and then next you'll check to see, I believe it's your wings, and then finally it's the amount of money you have. So there's multiple ways you can tiebreak in this game. And that's basically the idea of the game. You're playing as Daedalus, attempting to help Icarus with his wings, ga gathering as much wax as you can, gathering as many feathers as you can, paying for innovations to make the machine work and function, and then eventually it's time for Icarus to soar, and hopefully go from one side to the other side of the board and make it without burning his wings by going too high or going too low and getting wet and making yourself fall into the ocean. Well, there you go. Let's talk about what I think of it. Okay, so let's talk about Flight of Icarus. This is a game with two phases, prep and flight. In the prep phase, you're playing as a worker placement Euro. You're placing your seals down in certain areas, spending stamina to gain value. You get two actions per round, and you have four rounds in the game. Spaces can be blocked. You're trying to utilize certain strategies based on your innovations. Sometimes you might want to get rid of your innovations to gain money for the bid on the next phase. And a lot of times you're going to want to have a certain number of feathers and a certain amount of wax, because without those, you can suffer. And in fact, without a little bit of everything, you can kind of get yourself in trouble unless you fortify yourself with certain innovations. This game is all about the best choice for the time and how you can utilize it later. And the prep phase works really well in two, three, and four players. Then we have the flight phase. Everybody starts off at the starting line and is going to be moving across, trying to get to the end of the game board. Players are going to be dropping down these weather cards. Weather cards will have this nasty instant effect and then an end of turn effect. So players kind of have a little knowledge about what's coming. And the player who plays the weather card for winning the bid has a little bit of knowledge as to how they can hurt players and not hurt themselves, which is a really nice little ta tactic, a little useful uh, way of kind of interacting with the players in one aspect where they actually have control on their turn. And also the player who's playing for winning the bid has a little bit of bonus as well. Having the players be able to go up and down and moving on these game boards, moving on the same space, costing them stamina, and based on their choices, maybe even more. Going up, because you have to flap harder, means you're gonna expend stamina. And going down doesn't cost you that stamina is cool. The fact that when you get to the water and the moisture builds up on your wings and having too much moisture is going to result in you plopping uh, or not having enough stamina and you're not able to flap anymore and so you plop into the ocean. The fact that as you move across the game board and these guys start falling down and if you get to the very end, it feels very, very good. And this game, both phases work very well as to the story, as to the theme of the game. Not only that, but the artwork works as well. It feels really great. The board makes sense. This is my stamina. This is where my coins are. I have my wax and my feathers, and I need to have equal numbers of both. And then the bottom, innovations. That's how I trick out my cool flying machine as Daedalus. And so 
uh, the theme is just tied into every aspect of this game. Daedalus is crafting this wonderful work of art, and then Icarus is going to take off and do his best to make it across the water. And some things happen that can cause you to flop into the water, and if you're successful, it feels great. Uh, when you're playing a two-player game with this, everything is great about it, except I don't much care for the bidding aspect. I feel like most games with bidding involved usually require at least three or four players, and this is no exception to that rule. Uh, when I'm plus playing with me and my wife, we, so that's how we started to learn the game, back and forth bidding. I win, you win, I win, you win, you win, you win, I win, I win, you know, it's, it's that, that typical type of thing. Um, there are certain cards in the deck that can be very not so beneficial to you. <laughs> you can lose certain things, and she was able to gather the cards that made me instantly lose feathers, so I was able to flop into the water pretty quickly. Um, so a two-player game, I'm not the biggest fan of the bidding, but once I tried three, and especially four players, that's where the tactics came in, because as you may or may not know, uh, on the back side of the game board, you're gonna get less spaces with a two and a four-player game, and there's a certain rules as to when you draw the cards, what type of effects you will suffer. Uh, because you'll suffer only one of the BC, and they're both usually the same, so it, it has a little bit of less control as to where you can move. But otherwise, other than that, it's a really cool game. It has this Yuri kind of push your luck type of bidding game that utilizes cards and tactics that have a little bit of take that, a little bit of engine building as well, but it's nice and soft and rounded and it works and it feels good. I wouldn't say this is like a strong any type of thing. It's just kind of got a mixture of everything going for it. And at the end of the day, your objective is just to try and fly across this thing because in general, even without your players, just getting across is gonna be a little bit of a challenge from the weather cards. But when you add all these extra flying vehicles in the mix, yeah, it gets challenging and it's fun to watch people plop. The player elimination isn't bad either, because by the time you eliminate yourself, usually it's probably at least halfway through the flying phase, in which case the game is basically about over, so there's no big deal in that actually happening, and you kind of see what you did wrong and how you can improve next time. If you want a game that's featuring this theme, this does a wonderful job of that. It's very unique, and it has a nice twist and turn at each of the different steps of the game, as well as the fact that it's just a lot of fun playing with all these mechanisms, and they all work together congruently. So if you're looking for a game like this, uh, which I didn't know I was, but now I am pretty enamored by it, I'm very excited to see what it finally looks like, because as it stands, this is a prototype. Uh, and I still really like it. So I got all the 3D printed pieces and like printed out stuff like I would do with my prototypes. So, uh, but yeah, it looks great. It looks wonderful. I'm excited to see what they finally do with this game. And so far I'm in. I'm definitely gonna be watching the Kickstarter campaign. And I strongly suggest you do as well down below. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Flight of Icarus. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, there's a link down below in the description. It'll be on Kickstarter. You can also go ahead and check out our channel, unfilteredgamer.com. has our blog post giveaway Kickstarter list as well as all the videos you would find on YouTube here as well. And if you're on Rumble or one of our other different uh, places that I post videos here. Uh, we have a live stream every Wednesday on Whatnot at 6.30 p.m. PST, and Sundays we have at 6.30 as well, and we do it on Twitch, YouTube, and Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook, and so you can watch us there play games just like this one. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time, and as always, I look forward to being Icarus and flying to the other end without you next time. <laughs>